Association. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful time so far. I wanna give you a very formal welcome to the 92nd annual, let me repeat that, the 92nd annual Alumni Awards. Yeah. This is one of the longest standing traditions in CU history, and we feel very privileged to be able to continue this program with you all tonight. So sit back and relax, and here we go. The year was 1882. CU had just started offering classes a mere four years ago. The campus consisted of a single building on a windswept hill in a tiny town of Boulder in the newly formed state of Colorado. There were six people that comprised the very first graduating class of the University of Colorado. It was his first and only members of a new lifelong family that shared something in common that nobody else could claim. This special bond that they had was being the first of the Forever Buffs community. <laughs> Little did they know at that time, right? Uh, these six folks had the foresight to actually create the Alumni Association. You might ask, why would you create an Alumni Association? These folks knew that they wanted to keep the graduates of the University of Colorado together, connected for years to come. Over the years, the university has faced a multitude of challenges. These include global crises. And throughout each of these, People at the institution brought innovation, collaboration, compassion uh, to bring people together to help the university, its constituents, and its community. And they did this not only to persevere, but to thrive. <laughs> September 19th. There we are. September 19th. It's the uh, beginning, or excuse me, the, uh, the early months of the World War I, final months of World War I. The Spanish flu, Spanish flu of 1918 had arrived. Where did it arrive? It arrived here in Boulder. It was carried by students that were part of the Army Training Corps of, of uh, recruits. So the campus at that time had to do something quickly. This may sound familiar to you a little bit. <laughs> they had to do something really quick. And what was that? Well, there's an outbreak that's happening. So they had to quickly expand campus facilities and they turned things like the student military tents and fraternity houses and the armory Woodbury Hall into spaces to care for sick. Why? The virus was running rampant. The university had to do something. Students were already in classes. This was the fall semester. So what did they do? Well, in October, they actually implemented quarantine procedures. And then they even closed down for a month. Why? To stop the spread of the virus. I told you it sounded a little familiar, didn't I? <laughs> Unfortunately. Fast forward. America had just entered, entered World War II. Pearl Harbor had just been bombed. And the university, again, had to adapt, had to change had to become wartime ready. And what did they do? What did we do? We started flight instruction programs, communication schools, and under the leadership of our president, Robert Stearns, which some of you in this room are getting awarded a Robert Stearns medal today, named after our president, he actually started the uh, Japanese language school. And the Japanese language school actually uh, employed bilingual Japanese speakers of Japanese de descent from most from the incarceration camps here in the US. They taught Japanese language and culture to some of the Navy officers who were about to head overseas. This helped the US win the war against Japan, played a really significant role in our history. Fast forward again the tumultuous 1960s and 70s. 
tumultuous, you might say, why? The Vietnam War was igniting the campus. There were protests against the war, against policy, against social norms. These protests actually built up to a fervor here in Boulder. And that protest culture is something that folks in this room, a few folks in this room, may know a bit about. Why? Because we have folks in the room today that are here celebrating their 50th anniversary, their reunion from graduating from the University of Colorado Boulder in 1971. I want to encourage you throughout the weekend, if you're sticking through with some of the homecoming activities, if you see somebody from the class of 71, pull them aside, ask them some questions, learn about their experience, learn about how they learned what the university did, not only to affect their lives, but also to affect what was going on in the country. And it was a very challenging time for folks at that point. So CU made a big difference. And tonight, tonight, we're sitting here tonight, trying to come out of a hundred year global pandemic yet again. And I wanna tell you something that makes me very proud. This institution, the one that you're sitting on right now, had to react in record time. The leadership had to act quickly, had to change things, had to ensure that our students were safe, our faculty and staff were safe. And you know what they did? They relied on the exact same thing that we did back in 1918, which was innovation, compassion, collaboration, cutting edge science to affect not just our community, but also the world. Some of the stuff that happened here on campus directly impacted the rest of the world in terms of how we're dealing with this virus. So multiple teams across campus had to pivot, change their jobs. We all had to pivot to that thing we love called Zoom, right? We had to meet the demands of COVID-19. So consistent throughout the, all the ages, CU has been there. CU has been there adjusting, dealing with, solving, innovating to change things, to make it so that we can not only survive, but thrive. So the tenacity of the people and the alumni of generations of forever buffs have played a huge influence on how the fabric of this institution has evolved over time. And it's something that you all should be super proud of. So 139 years ago, 1882, that's when all this started. It started with six, but it's grown to a family of hundreds of thousands living alumni, living. That means three times the Boulder population. And you know what, they're scattered all over the country, cities, states all over the country, countries across the world, there are forever buffs. And tonight, tonight is special because tonight we get to celebrate some of the amazing things that our population, our forever buffs community, our CU Boulder community have done that are just amazing and you're gonna be blown away, I guarantee it. We have some incredible winners today who have done some things that have contributed to their local communities, the university community, and the world community. Risen to overcome challenge, preserved to make an impact across the world. So today, things are clearly still a little different. They're not normal. Last year, we did this on Zoom, 100% still really fun. It was still an honor. It was still incredible to honor the incredible work of our Forever Buffs community. Today, we're hybrid. Yeah, the word of the future. We have all of you here in person, and we also have a virtual group that's joining us as well that are watching this online. And I want to thank all of you that are here in person, and I want to especially thank those that have joined us online as well. This is a new world where we're able to do some of these incredible things and share it in mediums we didn't before. So as we're here in person, I wanna assure everybody we're following the COVID protocols that the campus and the city of Boulder have established. And we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable. So whatever you decide, you wanna wear a mask while you're at your table, wear a mask. If you don't wanna wear a mask, you're at your table, that's allowed. So, but if you're up moving around, we ask you to take others into consideration. Now, today 
even though it's a different format, the intent is still the same, to really take a look at who's in our community and who do we need to recognize for their outstanding contributions. So today we get to honor eight of CU's finest. And for the very first time, we're honoring a team. So that's very exciting as well. And you're gonna hear all about that in just a few minutes. So our honorees are examples of what the university does best. And what the university does best is really represent the aspiration, the innovation, the passion, the character, the scholarship. And our awards committee, who I'd like to recognize, takes an enormous amount of time to carefully screen nominees, to select the winners. You can see the list of our, uh, award, our, our nominee panel, excuse me, our selection panel. I'd like you to recognize these folks with me with a round of applause. If you were on the selection committee, would you please rise? You'll notice that these folks come not just from the campus, but from the community at large. And so we really appreciate the time and dedication. We also are joined today uh, by some other really incredible volunteers. And these are our current and past Alumni Association board members. And these folks are volunteers of the greatest sense. They volunteer their time, their talent, and their treasure to come and spend time with the Alumni Association staff to help guide us, to help spend time letting us know what they think works, what doesn't work, suggestions of the future. And I wanna especially call them out and thank them for their service. And today we're actually joined by D.B. Wilson. D.B., if you'll just raise your hand. He's our chair of the board. It's over here at table one. We also are joined by Karen Rutstein. Karen, if you'll raise your hand as well. Karen is president of a group called Forever Gold. And Forever Gold is a movement of highly engaged alumni and friends that are here to advance the institution. A wonderful organization, you see name tags, it says Forever Gold on the bottom. Uh, I encourage you to ask some questions of those folks. It's really a wonderful organization. I also wanna thank our colleges and schools for being here and for their support of this incredible evening. So thank you for being here. So yes, round of applause, absolutely. All right, now I feel very fortunate. I get to share a stage with a famous person and uh, I get to introduce our MC for the evening, a woman that probably doesn't need any introduction, but I'm gonna give her one anyway, because she deserves it. Nine News anchor, Kim Christensen. Now, yes. You're gonna hear her voice in the videos that you're gonna see of our award winners. But I wanna tell you a little bit about our honoree today in our MC. And that is Kim has donated her time to this. This is her fifth year doing this out of the goodness of her heart. Now, why would you say that's out of the goodness of her heart? If you live in the Denver metro area, you will see Kim's face on the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine, the 10, the 12. She's on every of the major nine news broadcasts as our primary anchor. And she's actually taking tonight off, thank you, to be here with us. And we're very excited about that. So thank you very much for that. All right, so not only is Kim an alum, She's worked at Nine News since she graduated, which was, what, three years ago? Somewhere around there. Um, but she's also a parent. And her son, Tanner, still here, right? Absolutely. And he's a junior. So Tanner is actually uh, here as a student right now. And one of the things that Tanner knows about his mom, but you all may not, is a little known secret that Kim was the twirler for the marching band when she was here. <laughs> She's a loyal fan, a proud parent, and I will say she is a true forever buff. Kim? It is impossible to follow Ryan. I don't know how he does, but he does. He's so, so good. I am so happy to be here tonight because we're together. How great is this, right? Um, I will be honest, I brought up a glass of wine because I really haven't worn high heels in over a year and a half. Uh, 
Uh, the pandemic, I was working from home. I practically had on slippers. It was awesome for six months. And then I was ready to lose my mind working at home, but I really haven't worn real shoes in a long time. So I'm, I'm just so happy that we're back here. Uh, I came back for parents weekend. We go to all the games, but I think there was something especially magical this year because the weather was just like, send me a perfect Colorado day. And there were parents everywhere and everybody was just so happy and thrilled. Thrilled. And, and I kept thinking to myself, all these out-of-staters, those parents are coming in saying, no wonder you chose this place. It's so amazing. It was such a beautiful weekend. And funny, Ryan brings up my twirling because in a practice session on Folsom Field, I chipped out two teeth in my college years. And uh, my son chipped a tooth this year in a social atmosphere. He says, our college experiences are very different, mom. Um, so clearly I understand that, um, but he's actually doing great. And I will say this, I cannot say enough what this university did to adapt and pivot. We thought it was a big deal in a newsroom to deal with the pandemic, but I do not know how you did it for thousands of students so quickly. I was one of those parents up there unloading a dorm room and saying, what's going to happen? And I don't know how you did it, but you did it. And they're so happy to be back. But I, because he came home, got to listen in on a few Zoom classes and they were awesome. They were great. I was listening with one ear and then he came home to do laundry last night and a big shout out to my CMCI crew because he's taking a sports and media class and I listened again and it was so good. It was, it was great. It was an awesome class. I even butted in, hijacked it for a minute. It was so fun. I, so the professors, everybody, I just cannot say enough because for somebody that's just wanting, you feel terrible for your kid losing that opportunity for a year, losing that experience, their freshman year, but, and then working out a zoom on an apartment, they, they learned, they learned, and you all made it as best as you possibly could and safe and they're so happy to be back. So I cannot thank you enough from a parent's point of view. Because I'm guessing a few people complain. You know, there's always something to whine about. Um, so we know that CU Boulder is an extraordinarily special place in everyone's heart and all of our hearts here tonight. This has been an exceptionally challenging 20 months um, that we've all faced in, this, in our lives. And now to be back on campus and to celebrate a homecoming weekend feels really fantastic. And homecoming really illustrates kind of the power that rises above. When you hear the stories of our award winners tonight, and they really are great, um, I was so inspired when I had the chance to voice the stories um, by their bold accomplishments because they embody exactly what this university is about. They serve as a reminder of the great potential that CU Boulder holds at any time. As we mentioned, this is my fifth year to be here. I'm so happy I'm able to be here. I'm not going to miss the 10 o'clock news. Um, uh, it's no big deal because this group is super special. We're going to take a few moments to honor them and also share the story of George Norlin, whose commitment to humanity is really the reason that we're here tonight. In 1899, about 20 years after CU was established, Norlin arrived in Boulder. He served as a Greek professor until 1917, when he became president, a position he worked in for 22 years. President Norlin oversaw Charles Calder's architectural redesign of the Boulder campus, which is amazing, led the university through the 1918 flu pandemic, the depression, and was a rigorous defender of academic excellence and freedom. So beloved was he that when he returned to his office after an illness, 2,500 students and the marching band turned out to welcome him. In 1930, the Alumni Association created the George Norlin Award to honor Norlin, his legacy, and the growing lessons of extraordinary alumni following in his footsteps. Since then, the association has recognized about 200 outstanding alumni. So this is a small select group with the Norlin Award. President Norlin himself was recognized with this award in 1939. Though not an alum, his visionary spirit and his commitment to this campus left a lasting legacy. In addition to the Norlin Award, the association has five other prestigious awards this evening to honor members of our university community. 
the Forever Buffs Student Award, the Robert L. Stearns Award, the Kalpana Chala Outstanding Recent Graduate Award, the Leanne Scoopta Lee Award, and the Alumni Recognition Award. Before we begin the presentation, I would like to welcome Boulder Campus Champ Chancellor Philip DeStefano to the stage before the awards begin, and Chancellor DeStefano, always here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kim, and uh, good evening to everyone. Um, as Ryan said, Kim is one of our very accomplished broadcasting alumni from CU Boulder. And if you flew in today from out of state, going through DIA, you probably heard her as the voice of the train. So Kim, that was great. <laughs> this train so, is about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so Kim, we, we appreciate you being with us again this year and sharing your talents and especially uh, entrusting Tanner to us. Uh, we really appreciate that. And I say that to all of our parents, that it's wonderful that you entrust your children here to the University of Colorado Boulder. So I want to thank all of you um, for coming this evening. This is one of my favorite weeks in the rhythm that makes up the annual life cycle of the campus. And it's wonderful to see so many familiar faces. But let me make a few introductions. And I'll begin with my wife, Yvonne, that many of you know. Also, some of our administrators are VIPs, and I want to start with our newest, Katie Kalarczyk, our Vice Chancellor for Advancement. Katie. Russ Moore, our Provost and Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Russ. Our Chief Operating Officer, Patrick O'Rourke. Pat, thank you. Pat and I spent the day at a Regent meeting, so bear with us this evening. It was, it was, it was a tough one. So uh, some of our deans are here. Uh, Lori Bergen, Dean of our College of Media, Communication and Information. Sharon Matusik, Dean of the Lee School of Business. Keith Molinar, our Dean of College of Engineering and Applied Science. My Dean, Kathy Schultz, Dean of the School of Education. And Jim White, Dean of our College of Arts and Sciences. And Regent Emeritus, Steve Bosley is with us. Steve, thank you for being here this evening. To our award winners, we're honored to be in your presence tonight. It gives me immense pride to recognize your accomplishments and your contributions to our entire university community. The Alumni Award Ceremony is one of CU Boulder's longest standing traditions. The first Alumni Award was presented in 1930 to Harry Alfred Curtis, a chemistry graduate who earned his degrees here in 1908 and 1910. And almost 100 years later, we continue to recognize the importance of honoring alumni, faculty, staff, and volunteers for their contributions to our university and the world. Their names are woven in the fabric of our university alongside of other uh, luminaries such as George Norlin and Robert Stearns. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize our past award winners, many of whom are here tonight for their continuing legacy in shaping CU Boulder. So will all present and past award winners please stand. This year's award recipients are making an impact in so many ways from their legal field to sports broadcasting, business, aerospace, public health, even at Walt Disney Studios, and of course, this very campus. And I believe this is the first time, as Ryan said in our history, that we are presenting an alumni award to a group of individuals, the CU Pandemic Scientific Steering Committee 
and science team. When the pandemic took hold, these remarkable faculty and staff members dropped what they were doing to develop the tools and processes to keep our campus operation through this crisis and often developing those from scratch. Their impact on the safety and success of our campus cannot be overstated. Because of, of the work that they've done, I'm so pleased to say that 95% of our students are vaccinated today. And 96% of our faculty and staff, which is just amazing. I believe we're one of the leading campuses in the country for our students, faculty, and staff to be vaccinated. And it's due to the work of my administrative team, but also the scientific pandemic team, which has just done an amazing job. And I can't wait for them to get their award. It's just gonna be terrific. They, they deserve it as everyone else does. And although you know, the contrib contributions from everyone span many fields, what all of tonight's awardees share is that they're trailblazers whose intellect, their courage, their curiosity, and their dedication are changing the lives of those around them. It's hard to imagine the individuals that CU Boulder might recognize another 20 or 30 years from now. But I'll probably be up here Making that announcement. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. But there's a good chance that they will work in careers that don't even exist today, making contributions we can't picture at this time. The good news is that they will have the skills and the opportunities afforded to them by an education from the University of Colorado Boulder. And they will be able to draw upon inspiration from alumni faculty, staff, and volunteers, like those that we're recognizing here. And tonight, we will hear from each of these award winners whose personal stories are as varied as they are remarkable. So thank you all for serving as role models and inspiration to each of us, and for driving our university forward in your unique ways. So congratulations to you all. It's an honor and privilege to have you here tonight. And it's certainly an honor and privilege for me to be the chancellor of your university. And Kim, I'm gonna hand it back to you, okay? Thank you, chancellor. You have reason to be very, very proud. Um, and so here's the drill for tonight. We're gonna to give each winner a medal, and then they're gonna have a couple of moments to share some remarks with all of you tonight. So a warm welcome and acknowledgement to our virtual audience because you're in for a treat. It's really great to, to have you with us tonight so that you can also hear some of their remarks. They're always memorable. Uh, so we thank you for joining us and being a part of this awesome Buff community. And now it is time to recognize our 2021 recipients with their awards. Our first award for the evening is the Forever Buff Student Award, which honors CU Boulder students who demonstrate their CU pride through extraordinary service to the university. And our first deserving recipient is Taylor Hirschberg. Taylor Hirschberg is passionate about the intersections of human health and the natural environment and how those influence global equity among marginalized populations. At CU, Hirschberg founded the first planetary health club at a public university which offers wellness activities in nature, networking, speakers, and opportunities for community service. Hirschberg has told important global stories about LGBTQI plus communities and how global events impact them. He has also influenced a number of his peers to pursue degrees at CU, recruiting students from the Community College of Denver. To remove barriers to their success, he chauffeured them from Denver to Boulder, helped with scholarship applications and connected them on campus. Currently, every one of those recruits is in their senior year with a full scholarship. Hirschberg has moved to New York City to attend Columbia University Mailman School of Public Health, where he is a recipient of the Hertz Family Endowment. His goal is to open an academic research center focused on forced migration among LGBTQI communities. 
set up here every day of every week, Taylor works to make this world a better place. The Alumni Association is thrilled to present Taylor with the Forever Buff Student Award. So I had to be first. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, it's been really interesting coming back to Boulder, you know, right at the nexus of where the Great Plains are and the Rocky Mountains. It's pretty inspirational. And so in that reflection, I, uh, I thought about what CU Boulder meant to me. And what it meant to me was about becoming. So you might recognize I'm a little old, right? Some of the students here could have been my children. But what I got to do was come to see you Boulder and pivot and become something. Now, if we all think about it, right? What is your favorite part of getting to a goal, achieving a goal? It's the part where you get to become the goal, right? And at CU Boulder, they really inspire you to do that. So I come from absolutely nothing, Eastern Kentucky. It's a pretty uh, desolate place, a place people like to forget, right? But coming to see you Boulder, I recognized that that was my power and that I could become more with that. So it's been pretty awesome coming to Colorado, Denver, and Boulder more specifically, and to have this journey um, to be believed in and to find, to find yourself yet again. I have to thank, of course, uh, the people who are sitting over there at my table. Um, sorry, my husband. Um, um, one of my best friends, Johanna Tagali, um, she was, um, I, what would you call it? Um, loved me no matter what, how grumpy I was. <laughs> and then um, Christopher Lowry, Dr. Christopher Lowry, who was my mentor and opened up the door to me at CU Boulder. Um, and of course, hi mom, I think you got on Facebook, right? To come watch the yeah. thing. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, of course, to the Alumni Association and for giving me the opportunity to get my very first award ever in public. So oh. thank you guys. Got a feeling there's many more to come. That's fantastic. <laughs> and hey, mom, <laughs> if she's out there. Okay, we have a second Forever Buff student honoree this evening. Our congratulations to Talia Loper. Over the course of her time at CU, Tala Loper devoted her time to service far beyond her academic pursuits. She served those at CU Boulder by providing opportunities for community engagement, education, and racial unification. At Leeds, Loper served as the Vice President of Sustainable Business Partners, an MBA club that helps local businesses attain B Corp status. She was also the co-president of the Leeds Social Impact Consulting Club, a student-run consultancy that helps companies pursue strategic objectives through consulting projects. On Leeds MBA Association Board, Loper was the Vice President of Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. She led multiple initiatives, including a nonpartisan get out the vote campaign during the 2020 presidential elections and a racial equity habit building campaign during Black History Month. Loper said, I am leaving to you with a treasure trove of skills and experiences, an exciting job at Apple and an incredible array of friends. The Alumni Association is honored to present Tala with the Forever Buffs Student Award. Thank you for this honor. And thank you to those that have supported me on my journey, including the amazing people at my table and my friends and family who are here tonight. I'm originally from the mountain kingdom of Lesotho, a country landlocked by South Africa. I was raised with the belief that motu, ke motu kabatu. I am because we are. We are all inextricably interconnected. On my first day at Leeds, I was keenly aware that there was only one other black student in the program, and I was the only black woman in the room. It was lonely. 
but it inspired me to dedicate myself towards diversity efforts and to take on the position of Vice President of Justice, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion on the MBA Association Board. It is Boto that fueled my belief that to develop leaders that will be equitable and inclusive in society, business programs must strive towards diversity. We need many voices at the table to tell our stories in our classrooms, our boardrooms and our executive suites to ensure that the decisions that we make are for the greatest common good. I left Leeds with a deep sense of community with my peers, my professors, and with the incredible leadership. I am humbled by the support that I received from my champions at Leeds and from around the university to ensure the success of the student-led initiatives that we created together. Initiatives that not only benefited underrepresented students, but all students, regardless of their backgrounds. I want to end by saying thank you to my late mother, Dr. Mercy Munsi, who taught me about Boto. I hope the next generation of leaders at Leeds and around CU will be inspired by Boto to be agents of change. Thank you. And go Buffs. I told you these people are really special, aren't they? Extraordinary. We are so blessed to be part of this Buff community in many, many ways. The next award being presented this evening is the Robert L. Stearns Award, the highest alumni association recognition for members of the CU Boulder faculty and staff. It was created in 1953, the year CU Boulder alumnus Bob Stearns retired as CU's sixth president, the Robert L. Stearns Award, honors exceptional achievement or service in any one, but usually a combination of the following areas. Outstanding teaching, extraordinary service to the university, exemplary work with students, significant research, and off-campus service to the community. So we have a very special recognition this evening. The awards committee selected the CU Boulder Pandemic Scientific Steering Committee and Science Team. Yes, they are a team, a team of individuals led by the CU Boulder campus through one of the most challenging moments in this campus's history. Most people will forever remember where they were in March 2020 as the world began to shut down. For many at CU Boulder, an incredible hall of work instantly followed. One group of faculty and staff, the CU Boulder Pandemic Scientific Steering Committee and Science Team, or the team, determined how the university would remain operational during the pandemic. They developed SARS COVID-2 screening tests to find both individual infections and larger outbreaks on campus. They created a contact tracing program that became one of the most responsive in the state. They helped design the HVAC systems installed throughout campus to reduce airborne disease transmission. They guided physical distancing and masking protocols, and their solutions were grounded in science. The work is not done. Much of the team's scientific work will be studied, reviewed, and published to help future crisis response practices. In the words of the provost, the team's dedication serves as an inspiration to us all. It is with gratitude that the Alumni Association presents the team with the 2021 Robert L. Stearns Award. So,
We're going to list a few of the names. I know some people aren't here, but if I can, I'm going to hopefully say your names close to how they're pronounced. If you can give us a wave, that would be great because we have quite a few members of the committee here tonight um, that we're recognizing on stage. They're going to say a few words as well. And for all the individuals that contributed as well to the team, Kristen Bjorkman, Roy Parker, Daniel Laramar, Leslie Lenwand, Kristen Mansfeld, Melanie Para, Matt McQueen, Gloria Brisson, and we also recognize those that were not able to be here tonight, Jennifer McDuffie, Shelly Miller, Jose Jimenez, Mark Cavanaugh. He is here. I see. Thank you. I, I drew the short straw. So... <laughs> I speak for all of us when I say we are deeply honored by this award. COVID has been both exhilarating and exhausting on this team. And to be recognized for the contributions that we as a group made is I think humbling and we're all honored. Thank you. Um, I would be remiss if we didn't mention that this is a huge effort by the university. And there are many unsung individuals who contributed to this and were heroes in their own right. We had students and staff who collected thousands of saliva samples every day from students across campus. We had university staff, which helped us set up those facilities and to run them and to deal with all the problems that occur every day. We had the contact tracing team and isolation team and the people at the Wardenburg Student Health Center, which took the results of tests that we ran and implemented them to find those students, isolate them in dorms, so they wouldn't infect anybody, and then contact trace who they interacted with. Uh, there were people in our testing lab. We had terrific people, Tassa Salde, Erica Lazda, and Patrick Gonzalez, who ran thousands of tests every day. And we employed a number of CU undergraduates to make that work. And they were outstanding. We ran more tests per day than the Pepsi Center down in Denver for most days of the semester. So that's the scale at which we were running. There were people who developed the tests that we ran. Carolyn Decker and Denise Mulrad, research scientists in the biochemistry department and BioFrontiers Institute, who developed the tests that we used and set up a testing lab from scratch in literally about a week. Um, no small feat. Um, and then there was the foresight of Russ, Phil, and Pat O'Rourke to give us the authority and I think the, the resources that we needed and just tell us to take go, do what you need to do and follow the science. And I think without their leadership, we wouldn't have been as successful as we were. So thank you, Russ, uh, Phil, and Pat. Now, time is short up here. I've got 40 seconds left. This is an absolutely terrific team of people. This was nobody's day job. All these people stepped up to do this because it was the right thing to do. And we have enjoyed working with each other. We've been exhausted. We've made friendships that are going to last way beyond COVID. Uh, I think the rest of our lives, for better or worse. <laughs> um, but I want to point out three people who made really incredible contributions. Uh, one is uh, Creston Mansfeld down here. Creston was a brand new professor on our campus in civil engineering. He was hired to run a research program to teach, COVID hit, and he stopped all that. And he developed a system to monitor our sewage all over campus so that we could identify where there were cases of COVID that we didn't know about and react accordingly. And this is an incredibly selfless thing that Creston did, and I think he deserves, you know, special recognition. <laughs> Jennifer McDuffie, who couldn't be here today, the Associate Vice Chancellor for Health and Wellness, on top of her very full-time and a half job, jumped in to really help us figure out how to implement things. Most of us don't know how to do anything other than academics and science and to actually set up sites all over campus to collect thousands of saliva samples a day is not easy. Jennifer was amazing and she also deserves special recognition because I think she did far beyond what anybody expected.
And then finally, and probably most importantly, I have to thank Kristen Bjorkman. Kristen is our COVID science director. We hired her to kind of be the person who made it all work. Kristen solved all the problems. She taught students how to drool in tubes. She made videos about how to drool in tubes. She fixed water baths. She figured out how to get samples inactivated so the virus was dead and it wouldn't affect anybody. I think Kristen was absolutely spectacular. And without her, none of this would have worked because she was the rock in which everything uh, rotated. And so thank you, Kristen, you were outstanding. They're all outstanding. You know, I can't say enough, but if I, do I have five more minutes? No. <laughs> and, and finally, I just wanna say, you know, one of the other things about this is that's illuminating, goes back to the earlier comments. The university as a whole came together. You know, we represent academics, people from the Student Health Center, staff um, across the campus. And as a, tool, as a group, we did something that none of us could have done alone. And I think that really, highlights the really outstanding staff, faculty, and students. We involve many students in this effort. And, you know, we can do amazing things when we're pushed to do it. And I think there's, uh, you know, precedent for doing that. And we hope to harness that spirit and collaboration in other critical areas in the future. And thank you all again. And thank you. We're all very honored. What a team, right? What a team. Creston, <laughs> I said that name wrong. Uh, but we actually did a news story on the fact that they were studying the sewage here at CU and it got picked up nationwide because of like, how brilliant is that? Um, we can't thank you enough because most of us, like, let's be honest, when that news first came out, selfishly, it was like, okay, I'm getting my family, we're hunkering down. I'm just taking care of what matters just to me at the moment because I can't control anything else and I know nothing about what's going on. And you had so much more. You were responsible for a university and all these students and all these professors and everyone that was a part of this family. So we can't thank you enough. You truly sacrificed and came together to make sure that we could make this work and we could get through this. So uh, one day they'll look back and say, how in the world? And, and you'll be the ones they'll hold up. They did it. They can do it. We can solve a lot of problems if we come together like that. So congratulations. Well deserved. Our next award for the evening is the Kalpana Chala Outstanding Recent Graduate Award, which has been presented since 1982. It recognizes CU Boulder alumni who have made exceptional contributions in their field within 15 years of leaving CU. So that's, that's a lot. It was renamed in 2004 to honor CU Boulder alum, Kalpana Chala, who had an impressive career as a scientist and an astronaut. She died on February 1st, 20, 2003, when the space shuttle Columbia exploded upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Several years before her death, Kalpana told one of our engineering staffers, you will always be successful if you follow your passion. This award honors individuals who follow their dreams. And we have one special honoree this evening, Vanessa Aponte. As a CU student, Vanessa Aponte met the crew of NASA's seven. As a CU student, Vanessa Aponte met the crew of NASA's 77th Space Shuttle mission and was inspired to pursue a career in aerospace. She's since spent the past two decades pursuing humanity's final frontier. While working on her doctorate in aerospace engineering, she worked on life support systems as well as controls, dynamics, and propulsion at NASA's Kennedy, Dryden, and Johnson Space Centers. She was later hired at Lockheed Martin, where she worked on the Orion spacecraft, spearheaded research and development for human space exploration, and led mission ops for the ascent element of their human landing system. 
Aponte has lent experience to CU's Engineering College while serving on the Aerospace Engineering Executive Advisory Board and Engineering Advisory Council. She's also an advocate for closing the gender gap in STEM. Aponte's work is inspiring to anyone who looks up to the stars in wonder. And when humanity first takes its first step on Mars, Aponte will have contributed to those milestones. For this and more, the Alumni Association is honored to present Vanessa with the Kalpana Chala Award. Thank you. Wow. Um, Taylor, Tala, and the pandemic team. That has a nice ring to it. <laughs> it I'm honored to be among you. Um, uh, Kalpana Chawla had big dreams, and she challenged all the notions about what a little girl could do at her time in India. And so I have always been very inspired by her. And I know that millions of people around the world continue to be inspired by her and many doors were open because of her. So as, uh, as I find myself in the theoretical middle of my career and life, um, I am now compelled more than before to ensure that what I do elevates others to be at the table, to follow their dreams and to have opportunities because I have had many opportunities offered to me. And many of the people that have opened those doors to me are here tonight. And so I am very happy to share this moment with you. I feel honored to be part of this alumni community at CU Boulder, which has given me uh, so much. And I absolutely love being part of Aerospace External uh, Committee and the Engineering Advisory Council. And Kathy and Steve, you had a lot to do with that. So thank you for that. Uh, to the Alumni Association, Selection Committee for your careful consideration of the nomination that Penny Axelrad, uh, Kathy Toby, uh, and Dave Klaus put forth. Um, uh, to the three of you, thank you for taking the time to put that together. I know it takes a lot of energy and time, just like everything that you do for your students at CU. Um, to Steve and Rob, um, you have always been my champions and from the time I arrived to see you Boulder as a summer intern to some uh, very key moments at Lockheed Martin. So thank you. Um, all of you on this table have um, showered me with opportunities that have helped me grow and inspire me to pay it forward. Uh, and to my family sitting at this other table here, um, you have been my support in all of my life phases, and I'm lucky to call ourselves family. Charlie, uh, I love you, Mama. Um, Daddy and I are so proud of you every day. I'm so happy that you're here tonight. And um, finally, to my husband, who's sitting over here. Um, you have walked uh, alongside me for 17 years in uh, this award means a lot more to me because we can enjoy it together here tonight. So I love you. Thank you. Way to make us cry, Vanessa. Okay. But isn't she so much like Kalpana? I mean, they really, I mean, make you, it's perfect. This is perfect that you won this award tonight. Just perfect. Um, challenging every gender stereotype and everything and your accomplishments. We know in 15 more years, we're not, we're not even going to be able to believe what she's done next. The Leanne Scoop de Lee Award has been presented annually since 1984 to honor the most effective and passionate volunteers who serve the CU Boulder Alumni Association. It honors alumni who embody the forever buff spirit of connecting, contributing, and celebrating CU pride through extraordinary service to the university. Leanne Scupa Lee was a beloved and energetic Alumni Association staffer who worked tirelessly with alumni volunteers. She died at a very young age, and this award was created to honor her and to those who work really hard on the behalf of the university. So congratulations tonight to Lisa Ayala Williams, our Leanne Scupta Lee honoree.
If Lisa Alala Williams is your mentor, you've got a friend for life. The former Disney vice president has been a CU student mentor since 2012. She makes time for regular communication, lending support, career guidance, and networking. One student even landed her dream job at Walt Disney Animation Studios after Alala Williams helped her become an intern. In 2002, Alala Williams joined the film marketing team at Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment as a supervising producer. During a more than 17-year tenure, she spent the last eight years as a vice president leading global creative services and strategic marketing teams at the Walt Disney Studios, promoting Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, and Marvel films. While at Disney, Alala Williams also established a strong relationship with CU Boulder, beginning with the Lead School of Business and expanding to the Alumni Association, offering invaluable insight for many signature alumni events, such as Homecoming Weekend. Today, Alala Williams is a board member for Forever Goal, which advances CU through the support of student scholarships, capital projects, and increasing overall engagement. The Alumni Association is proud to present Lisa with the Lee Ann Scupa Lee Award. Wow, this is awesome. Good evening, fellow buffs and friends of CU. I'm beyond humbled to be honored tonight by a university I love, surrounded by great friends, my amazing husband, three of my five Leeds mentees, and standing alongside my fellow alumni honorees. We're all so unique and from different backgrounds, which I love. I think that's part of what makes CU so cool and so special. In fact, I think I'm probably the only alum that can probably name all of the Disney princesses, Marvel's <laughs> Avengers, and knew who knows the difference between a Star Wars TIE fighter and an X-Wing. <laughs> That's what 18 years of living in the mouse house gets you. <laughs> but I really want to say that I've sure enjoyed partnering with the passionate staff and the fellow buffs on the CU Alumni Association board. It's been tons of fun from homecoming events the, the planning of those events to hosting dinners with 12 buffs at my home to global travel with the roaming buffaloes we've made some amazing and wonderful friends and in the forever gold group we've met more sharp alums highly engaged with the cu of today while supporting the cu of tomorrow a major highlight of my career is it was being an executive mentor at leeds business school over the past 10 years it's been a valuable personal connection that I highly recommend to others and to all of you. I've enjoyed learning what it's like to be a student today. I've been energized by their energy. Plus I've grown personally while helping ideate options and new solutions for their challenges, providing guidance through the semester, along a career path, or even a personal journey around the globe. My mentees continue to inspire me, and I couldn't be more prouder of the strong and accomplished women they've become. They know that I'll always be just a text or a phone call away as they navigate their careers and continue to build their lives. Bravo, 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 ladies. Although I'm being honored tonight for the time and energy I've given back to CU, I feel like I've always been the one receiving the most. And while it's always, very often, I should say, it's been all about the goals and careers and accomplishments. It's become even more about the long, lifelong friendships, the respect, and creating our best lives. Thanks again to the Alumni Association, your whole team. Go Buffs! You never know when you need to know all the Disney princesses and every from Star Wars. It will always come in handy at some point in your life. Our next award is the Alumni Recognition Award, which honors CU Boulder alumni who have demonstrated extraordinary leadership, commitment, dedication, and service to the advancement of the university. And the mission the Alumni Association has presenting this award since 1935. We have one Alumni Recognition honoree this evening. Marianne Casey. 
Coloradoan Marianne Casey exemplifies what it means to be an internationalist, a trailblazer, and a leader. After studying international affairs at CU Boulder, her education was a launch pad to her diplomatic career, during which she became the first woman U.S. ambassador to North Africa serving in the countries of Algeria and Tunisia. Following her tremendous international career, including two ambassadorships and a fellowship at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, Casey returned to her alma mater in 1997 as a State Department diplomat in residence. Casey also co-founded and generously contributes to the International Affairs Global Grants Endowment at CU, which annually funds over 20 scholarships for education abroad for Boulder-based international affairs majors. She also chaired the advisory board for CU Boulder's International Affairs Program for nearly a decade, building it up to become a model for alumni engagement in the College of Arts and Sciences. Said the advisory board of CU's International Affairs Program, Ambassador Casey's dedication to CU Boulder is extraordinary in every way. The Alumni Association is proud to present Marianne with the Alumni Recognition Award. Thank you, Kim, for that introduction. Um, I can, such a laudatory piece, I can hardly wait to hear what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I watch you every night, so it's nice to see you here. Uh, it's said the diplomat is someone who can tell you to get lost in such a way that you actually look forward to the trip. <laughs> I'm not 100% certain of the veracity of that statement, but I do know that good diplomats like myself and my colleague, Barbara Miller, who's here at my table tonight, are passionate internationalists because experience has taught us that connectivity and cooperation are the keys for resolving the problems of the world. Since my return from overseas, it's been exceptionally rewarding to find CU Boulder firmly committed under the chancellor's leadership to providing quality education in a global context and to ensuring that the university's graduates can compete successfully in tomorrow's world. What a privilege it is to be able to support that goal through the International Affairs Global Grants Scholarship Program. My sincere gratitude goes out to all those who have made that opportunity and this award possible. I especially think of Alex Becker, our advisory board chairman and my nominator, along with Phil, uh, Faith Larson, our vice chair. Professor Tom Zeiler gets six stars, six gold stars for his vision and dynamism, as do my board colleagues like Rick Pereka and the deans that I have worked with over the years. My brother Mike and his partner Barb flew in from Las Vegas today for this event. Their presence reflects not only their kind regard for me, but also the premium that they place on overseas educational experience. Mike has been a supporter of the Global Grants Program from the outset uh, to, to mark this special occasion. He and I are pleased to offer a new gift commitment to help build our scholarship fund. Oh, We find the give while you live mantra very appealing. It's so much more fun than waiting till transitioning to the other side. <laughs> the world used to be about the size of a beach ball. No more, it has shrunk. These days, what happens anywhere matters everywhere. What better way to ensure meeting that challenge uh, than investing in the future of our young people and introducing them early on to the wonders of the world beyond our borders. Warm thanks again to the Chancellor and to the Alum Association and to ANS Development for the critical role they play in making good things happen. Thank you all very much.
Okay, the next flyer we get from CU, from the Alumni Association, Give While You Live. I guarantee you, Ryan, come on. It's a cat. Give while you live. It's the only way to go. Otherwise, you never know. Okay? I love that. Thank you. Uh, the final award this evening is the George Norlin Award. This honor is the highest recognition presented by the CU Boulder Alumni Association. It pays tribute to the alumni of the University of Colorado Boulder for distinguished lifetime achievement. It recognizes those who have demonstrated a long lasting commitment to excellence in their chosen field of endeavor and enduring devotion to the betterment of society and to their communities as well. This year, the awards committee honors three very special Norlin Award recipients. So wait till you hear. The first one is Christine Marie Aguilar. I didn't say that very clearly. You'll hear the video. Christine Marie Aguayo's trailblazing career as a lawyer, judge, educator, and public servant has broken down barriers and inspired other underrepresented students to follow their dreams. After graduating from CU, she became the first Latina from Colorado to graduate from Harvard Law in 1980. She became a private practice lawyer, tenured professor at the University of Kansas, and university counsel at CU. Since 2008, she has presided as a district court judge in the U.S. District Court for the state of Colorado. Aguayo received the 2013 Latina Trailblazer Award from the Latinas First Foundation and was inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame and the Colorado Latino Hall of Fame. Received the 2020 Award of Merit from the Denver Bar Association and received the 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award from the Center for Legal Inclusiveness. In 2014, she founded the Colorado-based law school, Yes We Can, to mentor underrepresented students who dream of going to law school. The program has a 95% college completion rate, and two students in her program have graduated from law school, and five others are currently in law school. For Christine's great accomplishments, the Alumni Association proudly presents her with the George Norland Award. Thank you for that wonderful tribute. And thank you to Dean Pullman and Dean Schultz and the School of Education for nominating me for this most prestigious award. I was a first generation high school graduate. So I knew nothing about college or working in a professional environment when I arrived in Boulder. Arriving in a, in a, at a campus that is this large can be quite daunting. I was fortunate that I found my niche on campus with the School of Education. I remember quite fondly how supportive and encouraging the professors at the School of Education were. I'm tremendously grateful to CU Boulder for helping me to develop my God-given gifts and for providing me with the tools not only to succeed, but more importantly, to excel in the many different roles that I chose to undertake during my adult life. I was so fortunate that later in my legal career, I had the honor and privilege of assisting Chancellor DiStefano and his vice chancellors and deans and the professors and everybody else who make this university run um, as the legal counsel for Boulder. I have such a warm spot in my heart for CU Boulder, the flagship institution for Colorado. I have so many wonderful memories of my time here as a student and later as, as counsel. Most importantly, I met the love of my life and my soulmate. Ron Arguello, my first week here on campus as a freshman student. We knew immediately that we were meant for each other. And believe it or not, we got married four months later at winter break. Oh <laughs> Ron obtained both his bachelor of science and his master's degrees from the School of Education here at Boulder. He was a Buffs fan through and through. I remember many a Saturday morning freezing as I waited in line with him on a cold and snowy day for a football game that did not begin until one. <laughs> but we had student tickets and it was first come first seated and he wanted seats on the 50 yard line. Oh, to be that young and in love again. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ron died almost three years ago. So he's not here in person. 
but I do know that he is here in spirit because he was always watching over us. And he is here through my daughter, Tiffany, and my granddaughter, Ariana, who are here today with me. And this award belongs to Ron also, because without him at my side, always encourage me and cheering me on and holding me up when that road became just too tough, giving me the inspiration and the love that I needed when I most needed it. I doubt very much that I would be here today with all the successes that I've had in my past. So Ron, to my best friend and my love, I dedicate this award to you. In closing, I would just like to say that I'm so proud to be a graduate of CU Boulder. I give back to the community in the way that I do because I believe that God places each of us on this earth with the hope that we will help make it a better place. God has blessed me with so much, and I believe that when he places someone in my path, it is so that I can be a gift to that person. My hope is that they will, in turn, be a gift to those whose path they cross. And I close every speech that I give with my favorite poem entitled Success, but since I'm already out of time, I will quote only the last two stanzas. To know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Thank you. Christine, take all the time you want. That was so good. How about that? I, how many me, love of your life in the first week on campus. That's, that's the best thing ever. I've never heard anything like that. That's so great. Uh, and the possibilities, we are so incredibly proud of you. Our second George Norlin Award winner is Mr. Jim Gray. Sportscaster Jim Gray is a 12-time Emmy Award winner with a knack for providing audiences with thought-provoking interviews and a front row seat to many classic sports moments. Known for asking fair but tough questions, Gray unearths the magic, joy, and heartbreak of professional athletes. Gray has been inducted into four sports halls of fame and was named Sports Reporter of the Year three times. Currently, he works for Showtime, Fox, and Sirius XM Radio. At Sirius, he is the host of a weekly show alongside broadcast partner Tom Brady, the most decorated quarterback in Super Bowl history. At CU Boulder, Jim and his wife established an endowed scholarship in honor of his parents, Jerry and Morna Gray, to benefit first-generation college students who graduate from Denver Public Schools. In addition to the scholarship support at CU, Jim and Fran are very active in numerous philanthropic endeavors, charities, and events. For his incredible career and accomplishments, the Alumni Association is honored to present Jim with the George Norlin Award. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. It's great to see you. Uh, because of an internship at the University of Colorado, I started at what was KBTV. It's now KUSA Channel 9. Kim and I went to school at the same time, uh, but I'll always be grateful and thankful for the mentorship of Roger Ogden, Cecil Walker, Mike Nolan, and Corey McFerrin. Uh, I'm honored to receive this award this evening. Uh, I thank Chancellor Phil DeStefano, and I want to thank Lori Bergen, uh, Francine Wojak, and Steve Jones, who, believe it or not, was one of my professors when I went to school here 40 years ago, 44 years ago, and the entire College of Media, Communication, and Information used to be the journalism school, and to the entire selection committee, thank you for this beautiful award. Coming back here um, to Boulder, where it all began, is it, so special to me, this is a special place. And the Norlin Award brings back a realization of a debt that we owe to the university and to those who, who came before us and the obligation to those who will follow. It's a debt of gratitude, as well as the commitment to ensure that others will have the same opportunity. And I, for one, will never forget 
that responsibility. The university provided for me the platform to help me fulfill my highest hopes and wildest dreams. It gave me the foundation that exposed me to what could be possible. From there, I took the ball and I haven't stopped running. My parents instilled in me the tenets of hard work, dedication, loyalty, and integrity. How fortunate I have been to have had such a solid background of love and nurturing that was provided by them and the University of Colorado. It shaped who I am and was an integral part in what I have been able to achieve. My father attended CU. I miss him every day. He would have loved this evening. I'm grateful to have my mom here. She was here in 1948. And she's here now in 2021. I'm also grateful to have the rest of my family here this evening, my brother, and all of them still reside here in Colorado. I'm so grateful for my wife, Fran, who's been on this journey with me. Many years ago, uh, we established the Jerry and Lorna Gray Endowed Scholarship to try and ensure that the path that I took, this total joy ride, can be shared by others because you never know what can happen in life. The Norland Award immortalizes the great people who inspire in others to be great and dare them to dream. My story could easily have been entitled, Expect the Unexpected. I grew up on Hudson Street in Denver and went to Thomas Jefferson High School. Then on to the University of Colorado School of Journalism. That enabled me to get that internship at Channel 9. When I graduated 40 years ago, I could have never envisioned, and it's really quite ironic, that I would be honored with an award of a man who's building the Nordland Library. I am quite certain I have never stepped foot in. <laughs> Go figure. I also would have never imagined that I would, would have conducted tens of thousands of interviews, including the last 10 presidents of the United States, or that I would have covered every major sporting event around the world, interviewing many of the greatest athletes of all time, earning 12 Emmy Awards. I also could have never have dreamt that I would have been inducted into both the Boxing and Basketball Hall of Fame. I don't say this to brag or to recite my resume. I say it to inspire others, to let you know that anything, that's right, anything is possible because if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. I wrote a book a year ago entitled Talking to Goats. So now perhaps I will indeed visit the Norland Library <laughs> to see if in fact it's on the shelf. Thank you so much for this wonderful honor. Uh, Jim, 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 you are so <laughs> My uh, partner in crime at four and five, Tom Grain, adores you. He was so excited tonight that um, you were winning this honor. And I urge you to get the book. If nothing else, the interview Tom did, the story about Muhammad Ali, the interview you got is so worth it to inspire everyone, how you get started and what happens, the possibilities. Um, so incredible stories. I, I read the book. That's all I can tell you. Our final George Norland honoree this evening is Tandine Rastandi. At CU Boulder, Tandy Mustandi took his education and work seriously. His family sacrificed greatly to send him to college and he was committed to expanding his knowledge and expertise so he could bring it back to his home country of Indonesia. After graduating from CU, Rastandi moved back to Indonesia and started his career in the lumber industry. 
1993, he transitioned to the ceramic tile business, developing an environmentally friendly business model that also supports local people through job placement and access to education and healthcare. His ethical and green focused business now has five factories and employs 3,000 people. Rostandi has invested over 10 million at CU, most notably in the Rostandi building, connecting the LEED School of Business and the College of Engineering and Applied Science, which celebrates its grand opening November 7, 2021. Leeds School of Business Dean Sharon Matusik describes her standing by saying his tenacity, commitment to his values, and unwavering dedication to education can be seen in everything he does. The Alumni Association is honored to present Tendine with the George Norlin Award. I'm so honored and privileged to be here. I'm deeply honored to receive this uh, special recognition. Like what Jim saying 40 years ago, can you imagine 37 years ago, I came from uh, far, far away in Far East. It took me 50 hours to get into Boulder. Today, I just flew in, I arrived at 1640. So it's only 24 hours flight. <laughs> It was 50 hours. But can you imagine, I like everyone to flashback. My wife was worried, asking me, what speech am I going to say? I said, I don't know. But Mike Lee just now told me, speak from my heart. So this is what I'm going to ask everyone to imagine. 37 years ago, it took me 50 hours to come here. It's not about intellectual, whether I could finish my school, but it's about the pocket. Whether I'm able to finish, because I was the first one in my family, in the extended family, to go to high school, to go to college. I was the very first one. So I took that responsibility. If I could come to Boulder, I make sure that I'm able to graduate. At that time in Boulder, like I said, Boulder is always very special in my heart. It's not from my lips but it's really from my heart. Boulder taught me not only in education, but taught me in my real life. The first semester I was here, while I'm studying, I have to look for the job. Can I get, can I get a job? No, because I'm not American. I'm an international student with a visa. The only place that I can work is in the dormitory, where it's a, a cafeteria. After two weeks, three weeks, I couldn't get a job. And then there is a open up working in the Nichols cafeteria. Wow. The only job available was puff and pants. It was the lowest job, but I don't feel it was the lowest because that is the real money paying by the, the strong institution. I feel proud. That was my first paycheck. I feel extremely proud. During the summer, when everyone going back home, I couldn't, I have to stay. Then I get a job to clean up the dormitory. Everyone can go back. How come I cannot go back? Because if I go back, I have to spend the etiquette. I couldn't finish my school, but I'm extremely proud. I get in 87, I get out 87. I get in in 84, I get out in 87. I think my grade is also not so bad. Yeah, I play hard, I work hard, and then I also party hard, and my GPA are still above 3.3. <laughs> when I finished from, when I graduated from Boulder, I have two choices. Once I work in Boulder, I work in United States, I have a good life. Good life means I have a car, I have a proper life. Another one, if I go back home, everything will be different. You have to start from the ground zero. So a lot of people always choose the better life, not to choose the lower life. I'm a Christian. God come from the top, always go to the bottom, not from the bottom going to the top. I'm a triple minority. I'm a Chinese, third generation in a Muslim country. 
Muslim population country, largest Muslim population. I'm a Christian. I'm a Calvinist. I'm proud that God teach me that you want to be a Christian, you have to serve, not to be served. So when I'm able to get something, it's not see you to reach out to me, but I'm the one to reach out to see you. The reason I feel really a joy that I can give back. Jim was so proud that he interviewed the last 10 president, interview all the best sportmen. Okay, one of it, he showed, I mean, the picture that Mike Tyson, like, <laughs> biting his ears. Now, how much money did Mike Tyson have? Is Mike Tyson name card show that Mike Tyson have how much money? No, but Jim is proud. When Jim gave the name card, he graduated from CU Boulder. CU Boulder gave him the opportunity that he could be something. This is the same like me. How much money doesn't count. But the most important thing is the education. I'm so proud. The school founded 1882. Very strong institution. My life, when I have something, I will give back. And CU is my one of the institutions that I will keep giving back, not only today, but also in the future. I share my joy with my family. My wife is here. When I graduated, my parents could not be here, only my mom. But mom couldn't travel with me now because she's very old and got a cancer. My wife, my son, my daughter-in-law, my uh, pastor, and also my close friend and a family friend. But that is not important. The most important thing, I share this joy with the big family of CU Boulder. Every one of us should be proud of CU Boulder. Go Bav. Thank you. Tandy and your wife had nothing to worry about. That was a great speech. <laughs> Speak from your heart, right? I mean, Christine and Tandy, and think about them, but first to graduate from high school, and then they chose this university. We are so proud to have them as forever buffs. Um, what a perfect night to celebrate these incredible honorees and, and the people that make this university great and everyone that's gotten through the last year and a half. We know the future is very bright for everyone. It's been an incredible evening and we're so glad that we could all celebrate together. I think this virtual thing is great too. I hope we continue to do it. Um, I see my son back there because somebody told him I told the chip tooth story. So he's probably a little, you know, that's how the virtual thing works, right? He goes, you told the story. I didn't tell the whole story. I just said you were socializing. Um, anyway, so it's humbling to be around all of you and to be here tonight. And um, we know you're making such a dynamic and impactful difference in our world. But with it underneath, proud graduate of the University of Colorado Boulder. So thank you. Go Buffs. Have a great homecoming weekend. First of all, I want to, there we go, little sound for you. I want to thank Kim. Give her a big round of applause. I also want to thank our leadership, our chancellor, our provost, our CFO, our deans, others that are joining us today. It's really an honor to represent this institution, and I couldn't be more proud. But most importantly, I want you all to join me in a rousing round of applause for our award winners. So one of the great things is we're lucky also to be joined by some students tonight. And I hope that the students that are here, the CU students, see the potential, see the incredible things that you as a CU Boulder grad can do. 
I think we have an incredible environment, an incredible group of graduates, and the Alumni Association is a conduit for that. So we're here to actually help connect you to each other and also to the university. I wanna tell you about a couple things that we're working on here to make a bigger impact on our communities. The first thing I wanna talk about is I wanna talk a little bit about the stories you heard tonight. This awards night is a special. You wouldn't believe these winners are just like the ones last year, they blow your mind. And the year before that, and the year before that, it's because we have so many amazing stories to tell. My ask of you is if you know other people that are part of the CU Boulder community that deserve to be recognized for what they're doing, please let us know. And the way to do that is to nominate for next year's awards. We're gonna open up those nominations in January for next year. Encourage all of you to think about those people that you know that really have made an impact on their community and the world. And this is a great way to recognize them. And it's also a great way to share the incredible things they're doing with our community. Something to be inspired by, something to be excited about. And so if you know somebody, please let us know. The second thing that I wanna tell you about is something that we've been working on in the Alumni Association in order to, to affect our current and future students. And that is, we're trying to provide more opportunities for students to be able to attend the University of Colorado. So in 2021, we had an incredible amount of volunteers who helped us review 811 applications for scholarships. That's a big task. And it wasn't just one person reviewing one application. It was reviewing lots of applications. And we were able to award over $172,000 to well-deserving students. 169 of them, to be exact. Now, these scholarships aren't full rides, but these scholarships help students, maybe with that little bit that gets them over the edge, that little bit that helps them make this experience that much better. Maybe to not have to work as many hours in the cafeteria in the dorm, right, Tandine? Maybe a way to be able to do some other things that they wanna be able to do, help with books, that type of thing. So these students represented all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of different geographic locations. And thanks to the generous donations of many of you and many others, we've been able to continue to do this year after year. Now, thanks to a very generous donation from a very generous benefactor, we actually have been able to expand this and we're gonna make a really cool announcement today. So our goal today is to raise awareness. We want you to know about it. We want you to be aware of it. Um, we want you to know that this impacts students. And we also want you to know we want to do more. And we want to do more and more and more. So today, we're really excited that this benefactor has allowed us to broaden our scholarship portfolio. And we've added two new, new scholarships, multiple of those, but two new types. One is for first generation students. You actually heard a lot of our award winners happen to be first generation students. And it wasn't planned. That just kind of happened. But this is a way to support the first in a family to go to college. And the exciting thing about this is they're also gonna be the first alumni to be able to come out of college. And that's our goal. So we want them to be a part of this community as well. The second one is actually lined up right with our, our chancellor's strategic imperatives. One of those imperatives is creating tomorrow's leaders. So the second scholarship, again, thanks to this great benefactor, is to support leadership. And leadership is students who are actively pursuing and demonstrating leadership academically and in their communities. Both of these new scholarships are now added to the other ones we have. They went live this week. You're the first ones to hear about it. Very exciting stuff. And applications for all our scholarships at CU close on the 25th of March. So all you students out there, definitely take that extra time to go apply for scholarships, whatever they are. It makes a big difference to you and to others. Um, so if you want some more information on that, you can go to our website, colorado.edu slash alumni. Great opportunities to get involved in more than just that, but lots of other ways. And before we actually break up to the meet and greet, which will happen in just one minute, while I have your captive attention right now, I want to tell you a little bit about us. The Alumni Association at the University of Colorado Boulder was one of the very first in the country of a public institution to go completely dues free. We do not have dues. We are not a member organization. We did it and everybody thought we were crazy. And we did it because we wanted everybody to be a part of this. 
You don't have to pay to be a part of what we do. And so the important thing of that is it's an inclusive community. Everyone is welcome. So we did this about a decade ago, a little bit over a decade ago. We were the first ones. Everybody thought we were crazy, as I mentioned. And now guess what? Even our biggest institutions in the country are following suit. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. We believe wholeheartedly it is the right thing to do. Now we're able to recognize all 300,000 plus alumni out there. It's not just a small group of members. It's now for everybody. And we have buffs all over the world. So here's my ask of you. Very simple. You've been here, you've seen this, you're inspired, you're part of the campus, whether you went here or your family or friends. One of the great things about this, you can represent anywhere you go. So what do we ask you to do? Next time you see somebody wearing CU stuff, give them a little go buffs, maybe a high five, maybe a, hey, that's a great place. I have an affiliation there too. You can wear your buff pride on your tie, in your coat, <laughs> on your socks, wherever you wanna put it. And what it allows you to do is identify. You get to identify with the community and we want you to be a part of it. So wear your gear and be proud of that. We also want you to live in the moment with connection. And that means connect with others, be there, be present. We want you to contribute to this university's greatness and we want you to celebrate in all the amazing accomplishments that you heard about today and many, many others that are out there. The list of award winners are amazing. And so be proud and be inspired. So thank you again for being here tonight. We want you to stay positive, stay excited, and most certainly keeps you in your hearts. Go Buffs.